Animating is not yet supported by Unity in their data-oriented technology stack. So how are we supposed to make animations then? The first way to do that is using hybrid approach. This means that all of the calculations will happen on the ECS side in systems, and the rendering and animations will be running on classic game objects. This approach is the easiest, the most flexible, but the least performant. The second way is to use ECS packages and frameworks to animate directly in ECS. The problem with this approach is that it is not supported by Unity, so it could be error prone. And many of these packages are paid and don't have all of the functionality of classic animations. So if you really need the performance, you can go and try some of these pure ECS packages. But if you want functional and simple solution at the cost of performance, you can go with the hybrid approach. I will begin with importing some of these sprites for animations for my player. As we have all of these sprites in our project, we can go to Window, Animation and open the animation window. Drag it somewhere, then I will select my player object and hit Create. And because we are animating just sprites, we can select all of these sprites that we want and just drag them into the animation window. Now as we have all of these animations done, we will need to separate our player entity and player visuals. So I will copy my player object and on the one that will be just entity, I will remove the sprite renderer as well as the animator. I will leave here just the authoring scripts. So if we try moving with the player entity, we can't see anything because this will be managed by the player visuals. And on the player visuals object, we will just remove the player authoring, so it has nothing to do with ECS and I will make prefab out of it. Now we can delete the player visuals from our scene and create new script. This script will be a singleton, so it will be just one in the whole world and it will be holding all of the prefabs for our visualized objects. So if you want to animate the player, animate enemies, animate bullets, we will put all of the objects that will be animated in this class. I have added the unity.entities namespace so that we can inherit from iComponentData and this time it is a class, not a struct, because in here we will be storing game objects. You may think that you can also store entities, but because we will be storing the visualized objects into the classic world, we need to have them as game objects. So this is the whole singleton script that will be just containing prefabs for all of the animated objects. I also made new authoring script so that we can set all of these visualized prefabs in the inspector. So we can put as many of these as you want. All of this stuff in here is really simple. We are just getting the entity and then we are adding some components to it. This time, because the component is not a struct, but it is a class, we need to use add component object. And then we are just getting all of the values from the authoring, so we are creating new animation visuals prefab component and setting the player to the authoring that player and so on. Now we can go back to Unity, create new empty object under the scene and to it we'll just add the authoring script. So I have set my player visuals prefab and now we can go to create the player animation system. In this system that will be managing the player's animations, we have some pretty standard stuff. I have implemented many namespaces that we will later need to use. It is a partial struct because it is inheriting from my system, so later we can also compile it with burst if we want. I have a variable for the entity manager and I'm also getting it in the update because later we might need to use it. On the start of the update, I'm just checking if in the whole scene we have the singleton, so I'm using try get singleton and this time, because the singleton is not a struct but a class as you remember, we can't just use system API, instead we need to use the managed one because classes are managed types and structs are unmanaged. So I'm just telling it that in the whole scene it should try to find singleton of type animation visuals prefab and if it finds it, it can just save it into a variable, otherwise we can return because there is nothing more for us to do. Now we could easily spawn the player visualize object under the player, but for us it is pretty hard to get to know if there already is some, because the player entity is in a different world than where the animated object is. So on the player entity we will need to add some component that will be holding a reference to the animated object. This component is also really simple, 
I have just added using created entities, made it a class, because again, we need to use a game object for the reference. So on the player entity, we will be just storing the reference to the game object on which we have the animator. Back in the player animation system, we will first need to check if the animated object was already created. If it was not, we will just instantiate it in the classic game object world. Before we can check for the animated object, we need to run through all of the player objects. Right now there is just one, but later there might be more players, who knows. So I'm using the system API.Curie with type local transform and player component, which will get us all of the entities in the scene that have the local transform and player component at the same time, which can be just the player. Then I'm also using the command with entity access that will also get us the access to the entity that we are looking at. And then I'm just saving all of that into variables. So first one, the transform is the local transform that we get from the player. Second one is the player component that we also get from the player. And third one is the entity that we are just looking at. Then using the entity manager, we can check if the entity that we are now looking at is containing the visuals reference component. If it is not, it means that we need to add the component and also instantiate the visualized object. If we found out that the player does not yet have the visuals reference component, we can just create the object with the player visuals. So to be able to spawn it in the game object world, I'm using the object that instantiate and then I'm just passing the prefab from our animation visuals prefab, which is the singleton containing all of the prefabs for the player, the enemies and so on. Then we also want to be able to add the components to the player entity that will be containing a reference to the new object that we have just spawned. And if you would try using just entity manager that add component, it would give you an error because you can't make structural changes while the for each loop is running. So we need to use entity command buffer for that. First, we need to just create it. So give it some name, say new entity command buffer and give it some allocator. The entity command buffer allows us to queue up many commands and then just execute them at the same time. So first we need to initialize the entity command buffer, then we can add some commands to it. So I'm using the add component and at the end we can use the ecb.playback and input the entity manager, which will just execute all of the commands that have been added into the entity command buffer till now. And lastly, we also need to call dispose on the entity command buffer to make sure that it frees up the memory. Before we play the game, we can't really see the player because it has not been instantiated yet. But if you try playing the game, it will give you many errors in the player system and it is exactly on this line telling us that it can't find the player's transform. So what went wrong? Because I removed the sprite renderer from the player, it no longer needs the information about its position, so it just removed the component. We can fix that pretty easily by going to the player altering script, and when we are getting the entity, instead of inputting transform usage flex none, we can input that dynamic. And this just means that when it gets the entity, it will also add the transform component to it. And as we play the game, we can see the player visuals as well as the animation, but as I'm pressing WASD, you can see that the bullets are shooting at different positions and also the player entity is moving, but the player visuals are not moving, which makes sense because we have no code for it. Now we'll just go to the player animation system, where we'll synchronize the player entity with the animated player. Into the player animation system, I have just added this else after the if, First, we are getting the reference to the animated player, so I'm doing that using the entity manager and getting it from the entity. Then I'm setting the position and rotation of the animated player to the same position that we have on the entity player, which we can get from the transform that I have saved here into the variable when I was getting the local transform. So just those two lines will make sure that the position and rotation of the player entity is the same as of the animated player. And those two lines are just managing the animation. So first I'm getting the input component. So I know if the player is pressing any keys. And then I'm just again getting the player animated. I'm accessing the game object from it. 
I am getting the animator component from it and on it we can do anything we want, we can set some boolean, pass in some float value and so on. So I am setting boolean is walking and this is just deciding if it should be true or false. If the length of the movement is greater than zero, it means that we are walking. If it is less, which means that it is just zero, which means that we are not walking. But I haven't actually set up the animator just yet, so I will get to that. I will be modifying it on the player visuals prefab. I will go to window, animation and open animator. Here we have all of the animations for now. I will just use the idle and move one so we can delete all of these other ones and I will just make transitions from the idle to move and from move to idle. I will also go to parameters and just add a boolean if we are walking. Now I will select the transition from the idle to move and I will add condition that we want to start moving when we are actually walking and the other way around so from move to idle if we are not walking. You probably won't be able to see it in the game because those movements are really subtle but in the animator now it is playing the idle animation and as I start moving it, yep, it plays the move animation even though we may not be able to notice it right now. But this is just the beginning of what we can do using Classic Unity's animator. We can change speed of these animation clips, we can make different transitions, blend trees and a lot more interesting stuff. The same way that we have animated the player, we could also animate the enemies. So we can see that now they are just walking and as they get closer to the player, they start also attacking. But this time we wouldn't need to create four scripts, instead we would need to create just one script, which will be the enemy animation system. Because the animated visual singleton is reusable, so we can add as many prefabs into it we want. And the visual reference component is also reusable. So bigger part of the enemy animation system would look similar to the player animation system. The difference will just be in how you manage the animations. So this time I'm just setting some boolean if the enemy is attacking based on its speed. But you can make your animations a lot more complex, add some floats, blend trees so that the enemies can move in different directions and much more. I hope that this video about hybrid approach was useful to you. It may not be the most performance solution, but it is really simple to set up and it is quite flexible. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.